So this is Super Scent. Okay, she owns the crayon case. Shout out to her. She's from New Orleans, just like me. Wherever it's at. <laughs> okay. Um, we do not personally know each other, okay? But shout out to her. I have supported the crayon case, great products, okay? That's how she got famous. Her and the brats, old lady, wife, our friends. Grew up together, were on social media together, in case you need a backstory, okay? She has a history of being on social media and talking about her relationships and all of that on social media, just like any regular person, except for she's famous and rich, okay? And that's just kind of how this goes. Now, the young man in the corner here who had on leather jeggings is her ex-fiance, Razor, who I understand she bought land for. Um, I, I, I don't know if she also gave him like a business, but she was out here helping the young man prosper. Um, she got on live in her natural hair, which I love. She's been wearing her natural hair. Looks amazing. Okay. Um, shout out to the braid out. Okay. And she basically just discussed the relationship and what all happened. Okay. Here it is. I'm not going to like lie about no nigga. I'm not going to, the truth is the truth. And it is what it is. Like, I'm not going to be on some, oh, um, I'm taking him back. I'm still single. Okay. I'm not engaged. No. We're not going to act like, you know, what what happened between us is not something for, for me to pack my bags in and move on uh, until somebody really takes some some type of ownership or deal with some type of consequences. The night when I was on, when I was on Snapchat, we was planning the game night. And also, I'm I'm a woman that's, that's going to fight a nigga. Okay. So we're not going to make it seem like... Or a nigga just laid me down and 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 rolled me out and I'm scared. I'm 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 never no. scared of a nigga. No, I'm not. And ain't no nigga gonna put his hands on me without me putting my hands on him. Okay. So that's just what it is. Race statement appreciated. Mm -hmm. Do but realistically, you did call physical harm to me. I caused physical. I call physical harm to you. When we was in a car. I had my little glasses on. Okay. So to me, this is accountability. This is somebody that said, hey. I'm known to knock a nigga out, but essentially I've been working on that. As somebody from New Orleans, yes, y'all, this is how we are raised. A lot of us, a lot of us saw toxic, abusive relationships growing up. It don't matter what your people tax bracket is. You might have seen your people fighting and arguing, adrenaline rush, people getting knocked upside the head, people fighting each other and then sticking together and acting like everything is okay getting breaking up getting back together all of that shit a lot of us in new orleans were raised in families where we've seen that people curse each other out talk to each other real bad you know and, and fight people fight but essentially yes it's it's abusive the the relationship is toxic on both sides but i still feel like for me what i've noticed is that when men are really not about that abusive life at all they don't want to fight they don't want to be with a woman that's gonna put her hands on him they don't be in those relationships they peep it and they remove themselves they don't go and be in relationships with women that they gonna have to fight niggas that like to fight women go and get in relationships with women and hit the women and then when the women fight back y'all act like the women aren't being abused when essentially the man is still stronger than her what she explained in this next video is what really made me understand where she was coming from because me myself personally i had to learn to stop putting my hands on people as well but i learned it a long time ago i learned it around 1920 I asked because I don't I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. But that's what I saw coming up. But I don't want to physically fight people. That's not something I'm on. I don't even want to scream at you. I don't want to raise my voice. I need my voice for this. OK, I need my voice to make this money. I ain't got time to be out here screaming and howling with you all fucking day behind the same shit over and over again. I'm not doing it, bitch. I'm not Nelly. OK, but either way, she explains that he snatched her glasses off her face. So she punched him in his mouth and knocked his veneers out. He pulls to the side of the road. She jump out the car. She walk off because she's trying to calm down. He go and grab her and drag her back in the car. And she was like, nigga, I broke up with you. Not because we got into a tussle, not because we was fighting, because that's what we do. She said, I broke up with you because you didn't care who was watching who was looking and y'all this is the sign that somebody might be maturing in this situation the maturation is taking place because for me personally 
when I realized I didn't want to fight like that in my relationships anymore is when I was like, I don't like being embarrassed in public. I'm not raising my voice. I'm not fighting with you because I do not want to seem like some ghetto bird out of control of herself in public. I don't want to look like that to anybody. As I got older, that was not, you know, I had shit to lose. I had a, you know, a career and all of that. No, I'm not getting in fights with you out in public. I don't give a fuck what everybody else is doing. Save that shit for when we get home. That's how I have felt. So essentially, if I'm out, I will detach. I will stop talking. But see, if somebody want to keep, because people have done this, they want to keep fucking with you because they want a reaction out of you. You try to stop talking to them. You try to collect yourself and calm down. And they want to keep fucking with you and keep antagonizing you because they want a response. Because any response is better than no response at all for a lot of people. So when she gets out the car and walks away because she's trying to remove herself and he goes and tries to manhandle her and drag her back into the car, that is abuse to me. And it doesn't mean it's not abuse just because she's fighting back. Men like that like to use their strength against women, but they also like to find women that people won't see a victim in. But it's still abuse. Yeah, you'll think that you're not being abused because you fight back. As if the man doesn't know he can overpower you. That's why when he dragged her back to the car, to me, that's the moment when you're using your physical strength to overpower her because you can't control her. You can't stop her from walking away. You can't control her mouth. You can't control what she's doing. You can't control what she's thinking. So you go and use your physical strength to pull her against her will into a fucking car, regardless of how that looks to everybody and what she wanted, which is to be left the fuck alone. Now, if she was fighting him and he was restraining her, that would be a different situation. This is somebody that's walking away. And a lot of times women don't hit first because they don't want to fight a man because they know that they're not going to win. But what happens for a lot of women is that we get so used to being abused, punked or oppressed by men in our lives that we're not going to be punked by no nigga. That's how we, especially for New Orleans women, I'm not about to be punked by no nigga. I don't care if you are going to whip my ass. I'm not about to be punked by no nigga. No. That's how you raised to feel. That's why I get so aggravated when people talk about how men are raised to not have emotion, how men are raised to be aggressive. Women are raised to be that way too, especially black girls growing up in New Orleans. We are absolutely raised to fight. We are absolutely raised to speak up because if you don't, you will get ran over and talk to any kind of fucking way. And a lot of these men, a lot of these men will hit you only if you are scared of them. As soon as you knock their ass right back, a lot of them will stop fighting you. That's happened. But essentially, how do you end up in a relationship with a man that might punk you? You got to choose better. Yes. You absolutely do. You absolutely have to get better about discernment when it comes to these thirsty ass niggas. But to be clear, she lives in Louisiana. She don't have a lot of options when we talk about picking better. When we talk, she has to choose better. There aren't a lot of options. Here, there are not a lot of options. There aren't. So I don't know, you know, if that was a, oh, y'all should choose, but, you know, because y'all love to say that shit. But at the end of the day, a lot of these niggas fake and pretend like they're going to be better for a certain type of woman. Super is considered a lit to these niggas down here. They know it, it. Trust me, Louisiana niggas, he not from New Orleans specifically, but Louisiana and New Orleans niggas know how to be charming. They know how to turn it on. They know how to open up doors. They know how to pull out chairs. They know how to baby the fuck out you, make you feel real good. And as soon, as soon as they get mad, you can't get them to come back down. You can't get them to be rational. And then do some bitch ass shit like get online and try to act like ain't nothing happening. Even though you know that something happened. Just be quiet. I think that's real easy for you to say. Y'all got to leave those areas, man. Like cut it out. Why women always got to be making all of these concessions and shit. Talk to these men sometimes. Maybe y'all should be having conversations with men sometimes. I saw 
let me tell y'all, we're on Tasha's channel. I ain't about to play the whole thing because the shit, you know what I'm saying? Like real nigga shit. I was like, girl, shut up. Girl, shut up. Like for real, shut up. And then I'm gonna get off of here. Okay, where is that? This beautiful woman right here. So crazy, but I want men to just start to understand the value of having a strong black woman. We know how to build successful companies. We know how to, you know, put our money here and there to make it grow. But do we know when we have something valuable in front of us? There needs to be a class where it's like, this is a valuable woman. This is an asset. A woman is an asset. I'm talking about. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right there. And then as soon as we call y'all pick me's, everybody gets mad. This beautiful woman is online trying to state her case for why y'all niggas should find value in her. When at the end of the day, she should find so much value in herself that it would seem beneath her in order to plead her case to niggas that don't even see the value in themselves. Do you hear me? These men that you speak of, don't even see the value in themselves. A lot of the times men don't want black women out of internalized racism. They have internalized that shit and they don't like the blackness that they themselves have. So no, they don't want to go and get with a black woman that is a reflection in the mirror of them or how they are lacking. They want to go get with somebody that does not reflect them. They want to move away from who they are as black people because we live in a system of racism. Okay? Okay. You as a woman at a certain point should be vibrating so fucking high that you don't even have conversation with men that you have to plead your case to. I wish the fuck I would plead my valuableness to anybody. I am valuable because I am valuable to myself. I am valuable because I can make shit happen for myself, let alone the motherfucker I'm with. And trust me, I didn't always know that. I was not always aware of how I make people feel when I'm in relationships with them. I wasn't always aware of how I show up. I would hear people say things to me and I'm like, I don't resonate with that. Like I remember one of my one of my homeboys growing up told me he was like, but be like growing up, you bondy. The way he said it, it was like, bitch, like, come on. You bonding. You know this is why, you know, people can't always step to you. Because you can't just step to you know any kind of way. And a lot of people don't have the capacity. This is a conversation I remember having years ago. Now that I'm this age and I really understand myself a little bit better and I do it, you know, learn a little bit more every day. Some days you have bad days. Some days you have good days. Sometimes you're really feeling yourself. Sometimes you're not. That's life. Ebbs and flows, ups and downs. But essentially... At 35, almost 36 years old, knowing who I am, what I encompass, there is no way on God's green earth I am going to be talking to any group of men about how they need to see the value in me or women like me. There's no way. There's no way. Because there's no way if you don't see the value in a woman this beautiful, doing whatever she got, doing, you know what I'm saying? You're never going to see it. Or when you do see it, it's going to be too late. And if you don't have the understanding to see what is valuable, you are not worth having. You're not valuable. You're not valuable. If you can't see the value in whatever beautiful woman that may be in your presence or in front of your face, you are not deserving of being in that woman's presence. And that's just it. That's just it. I ain't about to convince these niggas of a motherfucking thing. And I really feel like that's what y'all doing. Y'all out here trying to convince, yes, like the Shannon Sharps of the world that black women are valuable. Man, please. Man, please. They don't even think they're valuable. Stop trying to convince them of yours. Just be, bitch. Just be. And what is for you will come to you. But this need... To, to prove what you bring to the table, girl, in 2024, cut that the fuck out. Cut it out. Now, with that being said, 
that's all I have for you guys today. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Share me with your people. And I will see y'all in the next one. All right? Bye. Anywhere you go, anywhere you go.